All right, what's up, Fish Nation? It's the Lando Show. Today we're talking about Sean Payton, who's kind of like the hot topic across NFL media, uh, DFW media, and you know mass media and the like. Right? His potential interest or lack thereof in being the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, Jerry Jones's willingness to move on from Mike McCarthy, as he you know didn't exactly speak too highly of the coaching situation, I guess, is the way that I would put it after hearing his interview uh, on 105 Through the Fan on Friday regarding the coaching situation. There was nothing that was really promised or guaranteed, to say the least. So this whole Sean Payton to Dallas situation, right? There's obviously a connection there and a personal affinity from Jerry Jones to Sean Payton kind of views him as the one that got away, right? We know it's also been reported or speculated that Sean Payton would have interest in being the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys at some point in his career. That's kind of like his dream job, right? So what do we, where, where do we go from here? I wanted to do some research. And, you know, the first thing to consider, obviously, is that Sean Payton is, in fact, still under contract with the New Orleans Saints throughout the 2024 season. So that's that's loophole number one that would have to be jumped through. And, and would that even be possible? How do you go about acquiring a coach that is is, you know, under contract and has a, uh, you know, for, for lack of a better term, a promise with with another organization right now, right? How do you avoid tampering and all that legal stuff, the legality that, that gets real weird? And we're gonna talk about that in just a second, which is some of the stuff that I found interesting upon doing further research and hearing about this hypothetical situation as it is you know, transpiring. Ian Rappaport obviously reported that uh, Sean Payton hasn't yet reached out to the Saints and, and uh, confirmed that he would be back for the 2022 season, which you might find kind of interesting, kind of weird. You know, he's already inked it, so what? You know, why would he have to? Why would he have to say anything else? Right? The 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 pen hit the paper. What's that? What else is there to talk about? Right? So that's that's the first thing. Secondly, Jay Glazer, who is a great friend of Sean Payton, reported today that you know, this whole COVID thing is making things kind of very difficult, and is is obviously obviously it's making things difficult for everyone, but. Uh, a coach like Sean Payton with an organization like the Saints who are going to be in cap hell for the foreseeable future right now. If you just check their, their numbers, it looks like on Spotrack, they're over $75 million in debt right now as, as, it, as, as we move forward into the 20, 2022 uh, new league year. So a coach that's kind of growing tired of dealing with, with COVID just weighing everything down, understandably so, right? On top of being in cap hell with no long-term solution at the quarterback position. So that's where it kind of gets weird, where the whole speculation of him potentially stepping down, resigning, retiring uh, for a year or what have you, and maybe pursuing a career in television, working as, you know, a commentator, color commentator alongside, I've even heard, you know, Troy Aikman with, uh, with Amazon and their potential new uh, TV deal that's in the works with the NFL right now. So Lots of moving parts, lots of moving pieces, but you know, to me, where it gets really interesting is when you find out and understand the the amount of power that that Sean Payton has in New Orleans, with basically a hand in all the day to day operations uh, within that front office. Mickey Loomis has pretty much delegated all responsibility to him. Everything pretty much runs through Sean Payton, from from personnel to. Uh, to managing the cap. So he's, he's kind of operating as Will McClay, Stephen Jones and Jerry Jones all at, all at one, just to kind of give you guys a little bit of, you know, put it into perspective there. So I wanted to look back at, you know, if it were possible to acquire Sean Payton, what would that look like? In 1997, Bill Parcells was acquired <laughs> Uh, by the Jets from the New England Patriots after kind of reviving that franchise uh, for, for a period of time, right? And that cost them four picks in total, as well as $300,000 to a charity of the Patriots' choice, right? So it's like the Patriots got a, a second round pick or a first round pick, a second round pick, a third round pick, and a fourth round pick all spread out over a span of three separate NFL draft uh, draft seasons, draft years. In 2000, Bill Belichick was acquired by the Pats from the Jets. 
So it's like there's this weird balancing act happening there. And we'll talk a little bit deeper about that. That's actually kind of a fascinating story, which I actually find hilarious by two teams within the same division. But uh, we'll get into that in just a second. But the Jets got two, uh, or I'm sorry, a 2000 first round pick and a 2001 fourth and seventh round pick in exchange for Bill Belichick. Now, what to what I just alluded to previously, we'll, we'll kind of try to cover that real quickly. And this is off topic a little bit, so stay with me here for just a second. I thought it was hilarious. This was a little bit before my time, right? I was a young kid when this was all going down, so didn't understand. But in 1997, when Bill Parcells was acquired by the Jets, right? Bill Belichick was already on staff there and had been named interim head coach. That was before... There was this negotiation between Jets and Pats to acquire Bill Parcells from the Patriots. So Belichick's deal, had he had negotiated in his contract upon being named the interim head coach that he would have full autonomy. Well, the Jets kind of went behind his back. Bill took exception to that. Uh, Belichick, that is, took exception to that when they brought Parcells on and then basically kind of demoted him down the ranks. And he was now he was now kind of firsthand man to Bill Parcells. So it wasn't his show anymore. And so where that all gets interesting and where it ties in to just being crazy ironic is in 2000, Bill Parcells stepped down, had it built in and negotiated with the Jets kind of ahead of time that Bill Belichick would be his successor when he stepped down and retired. So that was the deal. The Jets named Bill Belichick, the new head coach of, of, of their organization. And then the very next day, I guess Bill Belichick, out of spite from what transpired three years prior to that, announced his resignation from being the head coach of the Jets just one day into his tenure. So <laughs> I thought that was just the most Bill Belichick thing ever. And then, you know, six Super Bowls later, here we are. Uh, you know, just doing your own division dirty like that was something I, I, just, I can't even imagine if that happened, you know, imagine a deal like that going down between, you know, Dallas and, and Washington or Philly or New York, just how, how much, just the chaos that would ensue from all that. Right. So back on track here, John Gruden in 2002 was acquired by Tampa Bay from Oakland for two first round picks two second round picks and $8 million in cash on top of that. And what's interesting about that is John Gruden is the only one that I could find of the five, which we talked about three, but there was five head coaches that were traded for and kind of like recent NFL history. Uh, John Gruden was the only one that I could find for, for certain that still had at least one year left on his contract, his current contract with the previous team. So if Gruden had one year left in Oakland, but was still being, you know, agreed upon to be traded for. And that cost two first round picks and two second round picks on top of 8 million in cash, which that's kind of, kind of a moot point there because, you know, Jerry can, Jerry can write that check and not think or blink twice. Right. But two first round picks and two second round picks, that amount of draft capital is enough to, I mean, that, that alone is kind of, Kind of a hefty price tag. So now, if you if you imagine with Sean Payton having three years left, what would that do to his price tag? What would the Saints, the leverage the Saints would have, uh, you know, in, in in negotiations with the Cowboys would just be, uh, you know, almost astronomical. It would seem, at least in my opinion, the way that I am able to kind of understand everything that's that's kind of going on right now. So uh, obvious willingness from from both parties potentially at some point, but then you know you go into all this stuff, like I've heard maybe a loophole would potentially be an option for uh, Jerry Jones to kind of agree in principle with Sean Payton to resign as head coach of the Saints this year, do TV in 2022, and then sign a contract to be the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys after that. But then that, that's, that goes into tampering and all the different legality stuff that happens. That's kind of a little bit, obviously, way above my pay grade and what I can you know, just kind of speak candidly about, I can do some more research and figure it out, obviously, but uh, if Sean Payton was supposed to be under contract through 2024, and then, you know, he steps down and a year later is the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, that's just kind of like weird, it's, you know, weird business, tough to, tough to really see how <laughs> that would, that would go by easily amongst uh, league executives or, you know, even Commissioner Goodell. So no clue what could, what would happen there. My personal belief is that it seems to be just kind of crazy far-fetched 
it is an interesting topic though, and it's a fun one. And it's one that will always kind of be connected between the two the two parties. Uh, so, you know, everything makes sense as far as Sean Payton being tired of dealing with COVID and, and being in cap hell for the foreseeable future. You know, for the remainder of this these three years, they're going to have to be kind of going on, uh, taking on a full rebuilding process. So, uh, you know, I, it's easy to understand after everything he's accomplished, 150 plus wins. And he's one of like four coaches in the NFL, I think, that, that can say that. Uh, the other two of the other notable ones are obviously Bill Belichick and, and Mike Tomlin. But, you know, maybe he's just ready for a change. And that, that would obviously be completely, completely understandable. Uh, if there is a way that I haven't covered on this on this episode uh, for him to be acquired by the Dallas Cowboys for a relatively affordable price, obviously I wouldn't be opposed to that, that, you know, hypothetical. But, uh, you know, I also know that it, it, it's just it's kind of a lot deeper than that so you know that that's where that's where it really gets interesting but nonetheless I hope that you guys found this informative or as interesting as I did when doing some extra research on it I hope I answered some questions uh, 